opinions expressed on the following broadcasts do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here are your co-hosts, Eve D., Bruce H., and the Monty Band. Yes, and Harlan's with us. Hey, Harlan. Hello. Hello, Harlan. <laughs> Har- Harlan is, is, is Bruce's uh, grandson, and he's sitting over here looking all handsome and everything. Very dapper. Yes, very dapper. So Har- Harlan's in the studio with us, so uh, we may hear from him on occasion. He may chime in there. Chime in there, Harlan. I'm chiming in. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show this week, Understanding Steps 8 and 9. Um, I got an email from somebody that says, you're doing a lot of step stuff lately, because we, we're we rebroadcasting um, the Chris S. Walking Through the Big Book series uh, on, on the station, and I think we're at, um, I think we're at steps, step 11, I believe, um, on that. And uh, that was posted on Monday, and then then we update, and this show posts on Wednesday. Um, but we're just stepping it up, doing a lot of step stuff. I thought I thought we were going square dancing. I told you we were going twelve stepping. That's funny, Bruce. Well, di- you didn't even <laughs> laugh. At I didn't even joke, laugh so at that. That's a... <laughs> All right, <laughs> so so. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce is just like, yeah. so so. Listen, coming when I, up when I have to be told that something's funny, yeah, it's pretty bad, it's isn't it? Not funny. So coming up on uh, on the twenty sixth of this month, and you've heard me talk about it every week. And I'm going to talk about it again. Is the uh, Lifeline Connections uh, alumni event? I love recovery, and uh, myself and comedian recovery comedian Bob Perkell will be there. Bob's appeared on Showtime, Last Comic Standing, Comedy Central. And this is a family-friendly comedy show, so bring the kiddos. And there's going to be pizza and, and, and all sorts of food that's really bad for you um, that, that a lot of people will eat because uh, <laughs> that's what we do. It's held at Clark College Geyser Hall Student Center, February 26th from 6 to 9 p.m. And that's the Lifeline Connections Group, uh, just a great group of people. And uh, we're, we're talking about taking a, a van load of folks up there with us. Uh, Roger McDermott, our newest sponsor with um, Jesus My Rock Consultants, GMR Consultants, is flying up from L.A. Uh, to join us for that event. So that, that's going to be a lot of fun. Eve may go. Bruce may go. We'll see. One of my sponsees may go. Well, is going. Bah humbug. Bah humbug. I'm going to get you up there and, and laugh, Bruce. You need to laugh a little bit. Bruce, give us a laugh. Come on. <laughs> mm, that's <laughs> No. I'm sure you'll hear a Bruce laugh sometime yeah. during the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So I've got something for you guys. I thought I just had to read it. I just had to share this today. This uh, Colin, my son Colin, um, in his AP English class, advanced placement English class, uh, was assigned what's called a modest proposal. And um, I, I'm not sure what that means. It's just that you have to write one. So, so he wrote one on dress code. And he read this to me, and he is he's a phenomenal writer, this kid. Um, so here it goes. I've got to share this with you guys. Uh, now, if you, have, if you went to a high school where the dress code was just pathetically embarrassing, I mean, I, mean, I went to one where if your shirt tail was hanging out, you know, they sent you home for crying <laughs> out loud. If you didn't have a belt on, you know, then you might get a paddle. I mean, it was just weird. So um, things haven't changed all that much. Uh, so here it goes. This is called Dress Code. Uh, teenage girls with straps made of spaghetti and shorts that are too short for their own name. Similarly, aged boys with pants that sag like the ropes of a suspension bridge and graphic designs on their t-shirts that promote gang violence more than Al Capone himself. Many people complain that wearing a flat-billed hat backwards on campus is distracting and unethical. Saggy waistlines have become elevated with the aid of a thin, flattering shoelace as a perfectly reasonable substitute for a belt. Not to mention that these shoelaces work extremely well 
and they're offered in a variety of grays and blacks. However, surprisingly, have become unpopular among the students. Girls wear absolutely terrifying lengths of shorts that cross the line set by the fingertip rule. These are just a few of the many attributes of the absolutely horrible things that students wear at South Albany High School. In order to get rid of the menacing plans of girls and boys of arousing each other with their disgusting choice of clothing, <laughs> we must get rid of the very thing that is causing the uh, uproar, the clothing itself. I propose to the public that the school district make it illegal to wear any form of clothing on campus at any school any time of the year. No person may step foot on the campus without first removing all articles of clothing, <laughs> including their undergarments. If one does this with even a sock, they will be given detention for the first offense and be forever expelled from South Albany campus for the second offense. If that same person should go to any other schools in the district, let that person's crime be punishable by lethal injection in order to prevent such a crime from reoccurring in the future. The system of clothing collection uh, will be as follows. Each teacher must remove all clothing before entering their classrooms so they can set a good example for the, for the <laughs> students. And every student must never come to school uh, on school grounds without first removing their clothes. If a student rides the bus to school, they shall first remove their clothes before entering the bus. If the student walks to school, they must remove their clothes before vacating their place of residence. There will be administrators on campus to provide changing rooms where students who do not follow the rule can enter in privacy and remove their clothes if need be, but will still receive the corresponding punishment. This proposal will not only eliminate any cause for distraction among the students due to the way that uh, people look, but will also provide for a more efficient way of using fabric. I propose also that every item of clothing collected at the school uh, by those who choose to wear clothes to school be turned into washing rags, bed sheets, and blankets that the school can give out to the needy. Uh, this will make for a charitable cause of a new proposal and will boost the reputation of the school as a whole. So just get rid of the clothes. You don't have a problem. I love it. I don't know about that distraction argument. I don't <laughs> think that's going to hold water. But <laughs> Well, you know, and, and what he's saying is, is this is just as ridiculous as the stupid dress code. I mean, yeah. they actually have a policy, this fingertip policy. If the skirt is one sixteenth of an inch higher than the girl's uh, middle finger, right, they get detention. Give me a break. Uh, you know, but it's almost as silly as, oh, your tur shirt tail is sticking out, so you're going home today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there you go. There's dress code. If you like a copy of that, let me know. <laughs> you can implement it in your own school district. <laughs> what do you think, Bruce? Let's just get rid of the clothes, right? I think he is a good writer. He's a good, <laughs> good choice of words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could have done it just by saying, get naked. <laughs> 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 Keep it simple, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness sakes. All right. So um, the topic, uh, Steps 8 and 9, Understanding Steps 8 and 9. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Uh, everybody, please keep your clothes on yeah. and don't go away. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide a safe and powerful healing environment. To speak with an addiction specialist, call our toll-free number 24 hours a day at 855-652-4325. Hey, look, running around in the meetings, gobbling up gallons of bad coffee, flapping his gums wherever he can bring a smile to a hurting face. It's Slogan Man! We know cute little platitudes and sayings on the wall in 12-step meeting won't keep you sober, but they sure will make you think, consider, and even laugh your way through an otherwise crappy day. Can't wait to get to your home group to hear those slogans over and over and over and over again? No need to. Pick up a copy of the 12-step Gazette and join the adventures of Slogan Man. Visit www.12stepgazette.com and subscribe today. Slogans and platitudes are no substitute for working the steps, but Slogan Man is very cool. Uh, 
And now. And now. It's the quiz of the week. That's right, everybody. It's time for Take 12 Trivia's Quiz of the Week. Brought to you by that award winning recovery magazine, The 12 Step Gazette. Visit them at 12stepgazette.com. Now, here's the monster. <laughs> Okay, welcome to uh, Take 12 Radio's Quiz of the Week, and uh, this week uh, is Step 8 and 9 Trivia. Are you ready? Here we go. Uh, Okay, uh, trivia question number one. During our amends process, it is recommended that upon our first approach, we may not want to emphasize what? A, what we have done wrong. B, how we have changed spiritually. Or C, the money we owe. How much we have changed spiritually. How much we've changed spiritually. Hello. Harlan? I'd take C. Well, sorry, Harlan, you get this. (laughs) Even Bruce, get a bell. It is how we have changed spiritually. It's emphasizing uh, our religious conversions and so on and so forth. All right. uh, Trivia question number two. Among the specific people we may need to make amends to, we find it uh, different for everyone. Which one of these is not described in the big book? Not described. Here are your choices. The man we hated, our creditors, the boss's wife, law enforcement, are our wives. The boss's wife. Bruce? The boss's wife. Harlan? Actually! All right, you guys are correct. It is the (laughs) boss's wife. Uh, Number three, there may be some wrongs we can never fully right. We don't worry about them if we can honestly say to ourselves, what? A, it's not that big of a deal. (laughs) B, I did not initiate the problem. Or C, we could write them if we could. I'm going to guess the third one. We could write them if we could. Bruce? I'm going to go with C also. All right. You guys would be correct. It is we could write them if we could. And C. There you go. All right. And your bonus. In the paragraph that describes the ninth step promises, it states, if we are painstaking about this phase of our development, we will be amazed before we are halfway through. What phase of our development is the author referring to? Is it A, our admission of wrongs done, B, our amends, or C, our sober time? Our amends. Our amends. (laughs) All right, and uh, Bruce and Eve are correct. It is the amends process. Yes. The amends process. And uh, that does it for Take 12 Trivia's Quiz of the Week. All right, we'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Hey there, this is the Monty Man from Take 12 Recovery Radio with vital information regarding a different kind of substance abuse and addiction treatment conference. The Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference, February 2nd through the 5th. 2017 at the beautiful Sheraton Gateway Los Angeles Airport Hotel. Well, the current field of substance abuse and addiction treatment has been evolving for almost eight decades now. During this time, we have seen many important developments as well as many, well, failed experiments. Isn't it time to step back and conduct a professional inventory of where we have been, where we are now, and where we are heading Well, the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference provides a forum that encourages professional dialogues of controversial issues, showcases innovative and creative treatment approaches, and offers an overview of the field and its future. Serene Connections will provide 27.5 continuing education hours and or professional development hours at this addiction treatment conference for the following disciplines. Addiction counselors, alcohol and drug educators, certified eating disorder specialists, employee assistance professionals, interventionists, licensed educational psychologists, licensed mental health counselors, marriage and family therapists, nurses, psychologists, and social workers. To register for the 2017 conference, visit us at www.theevolutionofaddictiontreatmentconference.com. 
And we'll see you February 2nd through the 5th, 2017 at the Sheridan Gateway Los Angeles Airport Hotel for a very different kind of substance abuse and addiction treatment conference. The Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference. Hey there, hi there, ho, there, yo, as welcome as can be. Yeah, so welcome to the show. A little uh, bumper music there was the theme from the Mickey Mouse Club. You recognize that in the beginning. Did you know what that was in yes. the beginning? Uh, yeah. Annette Foodatello. I didn't hear none of it. M-I-C-K. Yeah, I played in the very beginning. Yes, indeedy. The Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, my dad had an original Mickey Mouse Club card. Oh. That Because he joined the Mickey Mouse Club by mail. <laughs> Years ago, and I have that in a little little, little lockbox. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so step eight says, may, uh, in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous uh, states, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. The original manuscript actually uh, reads, um, became willing to make complete amends to them all. Uh, And step nine reads, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except for when to do so would injure them or others. So made a list of all persons we had harmed. Do we not have that list already? Yes. Yeah. Do we need to expound on it? Maybe. We might, because if it wasn't related to a resentment. Bring your mic up there. If if the person's not related to a resentment where we just clearly did something to another person and they didn't make our, our fourth inventory resentment or fear or mm-hmm. sex inventory may, may be there anyway mm-hmm. without those yes bruce yeah yeah because once you start to do this you see the benefit of it of living this spiritual life you know where it says in the ninth step that it's not a theory yes we have to live it so once you start to see that then these things are going to come up that didn't get on the list and uh i think you're going to be eager if mm-hmm. I could use that word to to get that uh, set aside or way with Bill worded it was cast out. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people want to do this right in the beginning. They, they've they got these harms that they they say, man, I just made a mess of things. I mean, it's their day three in a meeting and they just, you know, or they're working with a sponsor and they're and I've had sponsees come and tell me, um, you know, I went to so and so, and I apologized, and I said, "Oh, whoa, Nelly, <laughs> yes. put on the brakes. Um, hold on one second. And, and 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 so we could kind of do more damage than good. And so, don't you think it's advisable before we start making amends to actually do this step process? I'm going to say something that yeah, it just might get a little feedback on this. This is a spiritual step. Hmm. And I believe if you're going to do this ahead of time, that you're going to do the same thing that you've always done. You're going to do it on a secular level. Or out of self. Yeah, or out of self. Isn't it self that wants us to feel more comfortable and wants us to make amends so that we can feel better? Isn't that secular? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to make ourselves feel better. We're here to put the other person first. To learn something about forgiveness, you know, to mm-hmm. to set our stuff aside for the betterment of another human being. Yes. You know, to try to practice unselfishness. See, and these are the things that we're trying to do spiritually. And if you're like me, what you've recognized at this point is your need for God to do that. See, I can't carry that out on my own, not on us. A spiritual plane. I need the spirit to minister to my spirit to carry this off. Yes, you know. I th- I think it's uh, interesting if we go back uh, to the last uh, two sentences in the seventh step, which is the end of the seventh step prayer. It says, "Grant me strength." That's uh, talking to God. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do Your bidding. Amen. Uh, we have then completed step seven. So we're asking God to give us strength, and in this case, doing your bidding, although we know that that encompasses a lot of things, in this context, um, we're talking about the amends process. And, man, we need that prayer. We, we mm-hmm. need to ask for God's 
strength to do it. So now we're not on a secular plane. We're on, we're on a spiritual one with God asking for his strength, um, his stick to you know, because I was really willing to do this. And then as I got closer to the appointment I had with so-and-so and such and such, I started getting cold feet. Yes. So I had to really depend on God because I thought, where did, where did my motivation go? Well, it was based on self. And so I had to kind of refocus and regroup. And I remember my sponsor uh, on two occasions actually sitting down with me and we, we prayed, we spent time, time, time in prayer before we went over to John's house or Fred's place of employment. You know what I mean? Because it took that, it, it, it took God's strength to do it. Uh, Cause I was scared. You know, and I, can I tell you, I was more scared of rejection, rejection than I was jail time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was, I had, uh, I had like lived that. that acceptance thing. I was so addicted to acceptance and the way you felt about me, and it scared me to death. Um. So on page seventy six, it says, "Now we need more action, without which we find that faith without works is dead." Let's look at steps eight and nine. We have a list of all persons we have harmed and to whom we are willing to make amends. Uh, We made it when we took inventory. We subjected ourselves to a drastic self-appraisal. Now we go out to our fellows and repair it. Notice it doesn't say, it doesn't say uh, we go out to our fellows and apologize. Yes. It says repair. Yes. Which is more along the lines of amends, making things right. Yeah. Yeah. An amendment is to make a change, right? Mm-hmm. So if you make an amendment to the Constitution, you, yes. you, you, you add or you alter it, you make a change to it. And, and a lot of times we confuse that with just saying, I'm sorry. Yeah. To, to have God work in my life, and the, what I've seen on this step is he was giving me the ability to just clean up my side of the street and put out of my mind the wrongs I had thought they had done me, you know. And then I learned to forgive. You see, and, and I and it started to get better. It was a process that was taking place, and when I seen the benefits from that, uh, the blessings, you know, to to go forward and do that. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to put the other person before ourselves. We don't want to set our stuff aside. What we've been doing all our life is blaming them for our condition. Mm-hmm. Hey? Yeah. It See, serves the it serves the addict very well to blame. You bet. Because then we've got reason to do what we do. Mm-hmm. It alleviates that guilt and shame. Yeah. So this is why I think people they don't see eight and nine mm-hmm. and it's it's a huge step and uh when i'm working with people i want them to come talk to me and what are you apologizing for are you going and giving information and doing things that you shouldn't be doing mm-hmm. or are you going and apologizing for your conduct and your attitude and then if the spark is set to go and the person wants to talk to you all kinds of doors are opened and they might even make some amends to you. Mm-hmm. See, they say the unexpected happens. But it doesn't always. And But this is where a right attitude, like you were talking about, that we're fully ready, you know, we're entirely ready, oh, yes. is because we have. We've, we've done that, those last columns on the fourth step. We've seen our part. And that is a, is a humbling experience. And so when we enter that... And we're making amends. Our attitude should be one of, I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm not doing this for anything on the other side. It's doing the right thing, not expecting anything back from it. Mm-hmm. Not all my amends were received well. Mm-hmm. Mine either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine either. <laughs> so, it, you know, that's part of, of it. And it. But what happens is that you've done what you needed to do. And hopefully over time the other person is softened a little bit. But... It's, yeah, we can't control others' behaviors, their responses, how they think or feel. That's not what that's about. Right. Yeah. And all the book is doing is giving you some some specific, some general ways to approach this. Mm-hmm. They're giving you some ideas of what this would look like. Now, in your life, it might look a little different. And remember this, people, just because one person does something and they have this result 
doesn't mean that's going to happen to you. Right. You, you might not get the same results. Right, right. I, I, exactly. Uh, I think it's it's really interesting that the different types of people that it, it explains they get you know there's there's all sorts of types of folks that we may owe an amends to but it gives some some ones that are kind of blaring for most of us it, it starts out with the man we hate it starts out with the resentments the people that we're angry with you know and uh and then and then it move it moves in into our creditors people we may owe, owe money to uh there's going to be probably some amends there it talks about most of us have you know done things like padded our expense account and so forth and then it talks about criminal offenses. That's a spooky one, mm-hmm. right? Wow! If I make amends, I may go to jail. You know, and I want to come back to that one uh, here in a minute. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and it talks about you know in this in the book, a lot of it has to do with the time that was that was written. It refers to the little woman. You know, you may have <laughs> to make amends to the wife, but you know, you may have to make amends to your husband. Uh, uh, you know, but it, it gives some examples, and I, I'm really grateful for that. I think that's really great that that, that he does that. But let's talk about the criminal offense. <laughs> um, and let me preface it by just saying that that the uh, the the place where it talks about, except for when they do so, would injure them or others, is not necessarily you. <laughs> Yes, it's not a loophole. It, it's not a loophole. Well, I'm going to get my feelings hurt, so I'm not going to do it. Yes. Or I may go to jail, so I'm not going to do it. Or, you know, something bad may happen. They may not respond the way, you know, I think they should, so I'm not going to do it. I, I, that's not what it's talking about. Now, mm-hmm. there is there is something that's very important about the amends process. We never want to make an, an amends at the cost of somebody else. That's right. So in the case of the guy who is married and has children and has a job, and especially if he's if they're a one income family, and um, he he knows you know probably ninety nine point nine percent chance that he's going to be be incarcerated once he gives up what he did, um, that's going to put his family in a really bad position. So this is where it is. Highly, highly recommended, by the way, that this whole process has been done with a sponsor. Yes, that's what I was going to mention about yeah. this particular part. Because this is kind of a sticky area. It's very sticky. And and if a third party, somebody who's worked the program well, and you know you have a trustworthy sponsor, having somebody outside looking in will be very helpful. Because it's going to be hard for you to make a right decision when right. you know that you're going to be hurt in some way by making this amends. Yeah. What you say there, Bruce? Mm-hmm. I keep thinking about something, and I don't know if I should bring this up, but I'm going to. If, if my God went to the grave for me mm-hmm. and human form, and that's what he came in was human form, and was tortured and ridiculed and spit upon and you know, all these things, uh, then why am I not willing to follow in his footsteps? Well, that's assuming that the person that's at their ninth step here is a believer in Christ. You bet. And you know, that's what I'm talking and about. They may not but, be. You know. But okay. I think what Monty's saying, though, is if you're if you've got a family who's innocent... And right. they they could be harmed by by the making of amends. Then that's why it's important to go to your family and to talk with them. I do, I wouldn't do anything without bringing my family into this. Mm, good you know, point. And speaking with them about mm-hmm. this because I might be under a strong conviction and I might have to go to my pastor or my spiritual advisor and really get some direction on this thing. Especially if it we're in a kindergarten, you see what I'm saying, right? So, if, if the meetings and everything are a spiritual kindergarten or whatever, yeah. you may need to go outside of that realm to get some help. Yeah, and, and the part that I, have, I think that you could make, you have to make a leap. But when I made this amends that I made here just a little while back for getting in that fight with that person, yeah, you know what I mean. I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I did not want to do that, mm-hmm. but I come under such heavy conviction that how in the world 
Am I going to be a light? How in the world am I going to ask somebody else to do this if I can't set my lying. pride aside, my stuff aside, uh, for the betterment of this person? Right. Yes. Right. Right. You know, and do this. I didn't have to open the door. I didn't have to let myself be abused. You see what I mean? But see, I had to work through those things, and it, it's it's vitally important to see. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, Eve, Eve, can you give us an example of uh, of an amends that went well for you? Uh, well, most of them did go well. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't remember firsthand. I yeah. do have a story about making amends, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, and this was before I actually worked these steps. The sponsor that I had doing um, going to this area of the steps was not by the book. It was by her, you know, what she had been taught, uh-huh. and it came down to me. But um, what I do remember, this was the most valuable thing that she did teach me. I was making amends to my ex-husband and his new wife. And I had, I thought that I had gone through the process of forgiving and doing all those things, but obviously that wasn't the case. So mm. she wanted me to show me show her after I'd written out my amends. And it was going to be, going to be mailed because part of the right. disturbance was me showing up in their life to see my children yeah. when I was there to see them. And so I, I wrote it out, and it was probably a couple of pages long. And I imagine that it had a lot of buts. <laughs> <in it. laughs> yeah, buts. <laughs> yeah, buts, or, <laughs> or because. Um, Mm. I'm doing this because, and what it ended up being, I I went back and forth with her probably several weeks in a row and the, and the amends became shorter and shorter until it was one sentence. And that was, please forgive me for intruding into your lives and making you uncomfortable by my presence and all the things Uh. that I have done that have caused you to feel uncomfortable. And then I signed my name. And I had said I was sorry so many times, but with that card that I sent, that was received by both of them. And it taught me that, in hindsight, now I know that I didn't do it well because I hadn't even worked the steps yet. Right. I was making amends from with my the old Eve doing the same thing over and over and expecting different Mm. results. And so it wasn't about anything they were doing, even though, I mean, when we're making amends, there may be hundreds of things that that they need to make amend, you know, say they're sorry to us about. Right. And that's not where we are. That's none of our business. Right. That's their, That's on them. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's their work. It's not ours. Our work is to make things right with the other person in areas where we have fallen short. Right. Right. Good. That's really good. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce, if you don't mind, would you share the story about the missing tools that really weren't missing? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> that was really cool, what happened there and yeah. how God worked through that. Yeah, I thought that my stepdaughter had taken my tools. and I You were really convinced. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I accused her. I, I, I went to her sisters. I told her sisters. I told her. Dad, uh, I told anybody that would listen, <laughs> you know, and I, I just, I started making threats to the people around me that if she came around, they would, I would shut this whole thing down. We were trying to sort this stuff out for, for my wife's death, you know what I mean? And don't you know, I'm right, you should feel sorry for me. I just lost my, my wife is where I, this thing headed. Oh, as we're cleaning the place up and we're taking the bed out of it in the front room where I was convalescing in the front room, I found the tools. Mm. They, were they, they weren't gone. They were there. They were under the bed the whole time. What did you feel at that moment, man? Oh, gosh. Just sink? Yeah. It's yeah. just what I had done to her. And it was it wasn't hard to go back and make that one because right away I seen how I had ripped and torn into somebody's life so I went and I told everybody that I found these tools the family everybody that would listen 
I told about it that I had made this huge mistake, you know, uh, and I even praised her for not coming to me and making it worse mm -hmm. by saying things, you know what I mean? She she stayed her ground, mm -hmm. yes. you know. So it was it was absolutely a wonderful thing. And then when I got a chance, I apologized and made amends for what I did. And, um, yeah, that was that was a biggie. Okay, so let's talk about these promises that, by the way, are as a result of things that happen in the ninth step. And I've probably said it a million times, and I'm going to keep saying harping on it because it's just it's it's just probably need to work a four step around it. It just drives me crazy when they read the promises in meetings. I, my personal opinion is they have no place in the meeting unless, unless studying you're the ninth studying step. the ninth step <laughs> um, or at the very least that before they're read, whoever reads them says, these are the ninth step promises at the very least do that. Yes. Because what I find that happens is a lot of confusion. So uh, we always talk about, being concerned about the newcomer. The newcomer is the most important person in the meeting. The newcomer is so important. It's vital that we communicate um, to the newcomer um, proper, you know, program language. I mean, we go on and on about the newcomer. And, and I get that. But then we confuse them by, well, somebody please read the promises. And so somebody reads the promises at the end of the meeting. Maybe it's mid-meeting or whatever. And the poor newcomer is going... You know, I've been coming to meetings now for three weeks and not one of these things is coming true. What's up? Well, they're not coming true because you haven't done the work that sparks that th these into existence. I mean, you're not going to have fear of, of you know, your fear of financial insecurity isn't going to leave you if you still got your creditors knocking at your door. If you've made an amends in that area and you're taking care of that and perhaps even have taken care of it, you don't have fear of that anymore. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that comes true um, in time as a result of doing this ninth step. But when we read the ninth step promises in meetings, as if these were the promises that happened just by showing up to meetings, man, aren't we doing a grave injustice to people? Hmm. I think we can get hung up on that, Ronnie, you know, because it 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 rubs us wrong. And I think that's one of the things that we have to set aside for the betterment of the group. Yeah, but Is see, it, I don't think it's the betterment of the group. It, I think it's harming the group. Well, then I think that, that we should uh, try to talk in a business meeting about it. Good point. To me. And we don't like to go to those because of the way they're in. <laughs> so, we like know, to complain but not show yeah, up at the business so meeting. So we yeah. really we really get a, a good look at our pride and yeah. our attitude and our conduct, you know, when it comes to those things. But are we willing to set that aside for the betterment of the group? Anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions. That's what they're talking about there. It's the bookend that ties that thing together. I, I get that. that. I get that. Well, I'll tell you what I what I found I've had to do. Yeah, but we're not willing to do it. Buddy. With sponsees is because, because I don't know that that's going to change. People that are reading the promises in the meeting are going to read the promises in the meeting. Um, so, so my job is to maybe do a little mop-up when I'm working with a sponsee. Because I'm telling you, in every single case with people I've worked with, they always bring that up. How come these things aren't coming true? And I says, well, because we're not there yet. It's okay. We're not there yet. But I, but I promise you, the chance of them coming uh, uh, into view is a lot more when we've done this process. Mm -hmm. And so we work towards that. So I think you're right. I mean, I don't think it's going to change that much. I just think we got to. There's some things I can tell you about the ninth step that is absolutely amazing. I started to find out what it was like to have freedom from self. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That thing with Kimberly, to have that freedom that uh, that brought, you know, when yeah. when that was done properly and it was finished and over. Okay, financial insecurity. Don't have uh, a ton of money in every move I make 
makes it less and less and less. Okay? But I, I don't worry about it like I used to. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm freer from that today than I've ever been in my life. And I just signed away, you know. Uh, a bunch of money. A, a bunch of money. Yeah. You see what I mean? Not only because I thought it was the right thing to do, you know, because I got told what we got to. Mm -hmm. See? And what it was, it wasn't what it was doing to them. It was becoming, it was consuming me. I thought about it constantly. I said it didn't bother me, but it was engulfing me. Yes. And the minute that I made the decision and the strength to carry it out, from that day to this, I've been free. See, you cannot convince me that that's not true, that that isn't what took place. It's the spiritual walk. See? It's just upside down and backwards. <laughs> so when it says, and this is what's read, if we are painstaking about this phase of our development, and that's one of the trivia questions, what phase of our development? Uh, the immense phase. We will be amazed before we are halfway through. With what? Our amends list. Not halfway through the steps, but that's what we that's kind of what we think when we mm -hmm. hear it. So I'm on step six, and these aren't coming true, but it says before I'm halfway through, they will. How come they're not? Because this is referring to the amends list. And, and I, I just think that I, I just feel so strongly that the clearer we make things and the less we confuse people, the better off we are. I don't know what's your take on this, Eve. Well, I what came to my mind when you were saying that is, um, well, of course, this is definitely just going to be my opinion. Sure. But it, when AA started, their high success rate, you know, seven, 75 to 90 percent success rate mm -hmm. because there wasn't any watering down of what the program was like there is today. And so there's that. And I just don't see a lot of people that are... When they're talking, you know, they'll say things like, it's not my program, it's the program. But then when they start sharing in the meetings, they're saying things that aren't the program. They're not written in the book. They're not yeah. even a, a close translation to what's written in the book. It's something that's way out. But you hear it so often in meetings that it sounds like it's the program because that's all you've ever heard. Right. Yeah. Doesn't that right. sound good to our ears? It or does. Before we're halfway through, mm -hmm. and so we latch onto it, and it becomes an old idea. I think that a concept. The preface that you were talking about, Monty, about saying these are the nine step promises, like making, uh, you know, talking, addressing the newcomer. This is what you have to look forward to if you're thorough. Yeah, I think that's steps. great. I think because to do that, then that's great. it is yeah. an encouraging word to the person who's a newcomer. Yeah. Yeah, then it would be then it would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let, let's look at some of these because they are awesome. Mm -hmm. they, yes, they, they are. They are awesome. <laughs> this is what's uh, this is what the big book promises it will uh, start to develop. Um, very possibly before you're halfway through with your immense list, uh, we are going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. There's the first one. A new freedom and new happiness. Thought you were free before. Look out. It's going to be cool. We will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. That took a while for me, you know. Um, I understood not shutting the door on it because I knew I could, it could be useful. But I had a hard time thinking that it was really okay not to regret the past. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, especially as a Christian, I thought, I'm supposed to be remorseful about this. I'm supposed to regret this. But it it, it wasn't that. It was a pride thing almost, mm -hmm. you know. Um we will comprehend the word serenity, and we will know peace. Serenity is different than being happy, right? Serenity you can have regardless of what's going on around you. Yes. Happiness is depending on the happy, happenings going on around you. So that's a really cool promise. No matter how far down the scale we have gone, and many of us have gone way down, we will see how our experience can benefit others. That's right, working with others. Yeah, now it's about God and our fellows mm -hmm. again. That's so cool. Yeah, God. That feeling of uselessness and self-pity 
will disappear. It's interesting how Bill... <laughs> Look at now, see, now Bruce laughing. is laughing, now but I'm laughing. telling you, this is the joy of the spirit yeah. we're seeing because... I know. We walk in it, and it's just such a wonderful thing. These are, these are words on a page, yeah. but when they actually come true for you, oh, you're... It is just the the most amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And this is where, you know, next week, I don't know if we're going with step 10. Yes. But so much of what we've experienced in step 8 and 9 will make step 10, it's so important. And that conviction that you were talking about that comes, because now we are free. Yeah. We're walking through, you know, we are free people. A man that's free never wants to go back that's into right. bondage. And I just made a I had an experience yesterday where I made an amends to a person that I had just had the problem with her the day before. Uh huh. And I said some things that were not appropriate. It wasn't the appropriate place and uh -huh. time. And so, and I was miserable. It was only 24 hours till I saw her again and went to make amends. But that 24 hours, it's I, all uh, I could think about. Yeah. But, and that's really uncomfortable. But can I tell you that that is not the same woman that had before she worked the steps where I would have stewed on that. I would have, you know, toasted to her for a couple <laughs> with a couple of drinks. And I just would have made that, you know, something that I was running with for however long it lasted. And that bitterness gets buried in our soul. It doesn't leave. No. And so, yeah, when we're freed of all that stuff, we never want to go back. You see what God has done? He's given us a way out. It's just doesn't look right to us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel warm and fuzzy, you know. And it, you need the spirit ministry to your spirit to be a spiritual person. Yeah, yeah. That's not yeah. That's not me coming. That conviction is from the Holy Spirit. You bet. It's not anything that I'm just coming up with on my own because I'd rather be right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Bill Wilson has been often referred to. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the case? We want yeah. to be right. Bill Wilson is often often referred to as an off awesome wordsmith, and I, I mean this just proves it uh, again. Um, I don't think I've ever looked at it this way before, until today. Um, he puts these things in pairs. You will not regret the past and wish to shut the door on it. He, he, he puts them together because they're associated with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we will comprehend the word serenity and no peace. Associated with each other. Those, those two go hand, hand in hand. No matter how far down the scale we've gone, we will see how our experiences to, will benefit others. We've, we've went down that road. We can say, yeah, like Bruce says, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, The feeling of uselessness and self-pity will disappear. Uh, we will lose interest in selfish things, and then what? Gain interest in our fellows. In our fellows. Self-seeking will slip away. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Fear of people and of economic insecurity will leave us. There's a pair right there. We will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. We will suddenly realize that God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. So these mm -hmm. things aren't being removed by our best efforts, right? We learned that yesterday, mm -hmm. you know, during yes. during the message Sunday morning. I mean, you know, uh, boy, I was I was all over that yesterday. It was so <laughs> wonderful. Um, um, are the, and then it says, "Are these extravagant promises?" Why do I think? Why does he ask that question? Because I think that if you're reading the first 164 pages of this book and you come across this and you really haven't done any work yet, you're going to look at those and go, whoa, this is a tall order. I can't even imagine having that kind of peace in my life. Yes. But then he says, but, you know, it, these really aren't that extravagant. Uh, but then it's, uh, then it's conditional. We think not. They are being fulfilled among us, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. Why? If we work. That's, yeah, but it's conditional mm -hmm. if we work for them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people go through this stuff a little faster than others, some a little slower than others, depending on, you know, their appointment with their employer or whoever it is they have to make amends to. Some people are processors. You don't want to go to them right away. You may cause more damage, you know, so it and, may take a little more time. Yeah. And this is where I think this is, we're working out our salvation you did, or this thing. I think these are, this is God's principles, and they're biblical, see? And and if we live out of those blessings instead of out of what we feel or we think in our happiness, then we're going to be doing God's will. 
Yeah. And we won't have to wonder what that is. And you and it might not look and feel like we want it to. And sometimes the That's answer true. is no. That's right. Getting back to that joining him in his suffering. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. Bill doesn't say they will sometimes materialize. He says they will always materialize if we work for them. I believe mm-hmm. they'll materialize. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about step 10. And it's interesting because the next statement says this thought brings us to step 10. Mm-hmm. Can I tell you that I go ahead and work step 10 with somebody, even if their amends isn't complete? Because I think it plays out in step 10 mm-hmm. a lot. I don't think you have to say, okay, all your men's have got to be done. You got to have that thing taken care of and, you know, clear conscience and you feel good about yourself and everybody has accepted your men's before we can go on to step 10. Uh, I know I know people that do that mm-hmm. and I, I think that's shortchanging your well, sponsor. Well, you're going to have new stuff coming up all the time. All the time. Yeah. Why add that to the list? Why have to go back through? You've already worked your the steps up to that point. I'm thinking yeah. it's good to take care of things. And yeah, you don't have a right understanding of 10. Right. And Bruce, you love yes. 10, yeah. 11, yeah. And, and 12, as we say in Bruce yeah. language, and 12, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. And, and we're, we're going to be touching on that when we get to that one. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll touch on that, and he, Eve can yeah. go the other way. <laughs> See, because that's, How do you know I'm going to go the other way? Well, that's what we do. We, give, we, give them, we, we stay within the confines of this thing, but we... We, Bruce has an interesting insight about. about 10, 11, and 12. <laughs> <laughs> we'll explain later. Yeah. Uh, next week, continue to take personal inventory. What? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> continue to take personal inventory. You can't continue to do what you haven't done. That's right. That's right. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. And I'll give you a little hint. Promptly admitting it does not necessarily mean you go to the person right after you've harmed them. And admitted it to them. Yes. Because some people aren't ready for that. But we'll talk about what promptly admitted it means. Uh, yeah, week. that that is, that's crazy because do you know the harm you can do? The person's still mm. burning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you come to me and try to make apologies to me. And I don't know if it would work because I'm, I'm a prideful, defiant, sure. you know, uh, stubborn individual. And, oh, yeah, that's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest that one. So we're closing out the show uh, this week with Ray White off of Ray White's CD, "Learning to Live Again." Uh, if you would like the entire CD, uh, you can get it by going to take twelve radio dot com, clicking on the donate button, and donate no more or no less than eleven dollars, and we'll send that to you. This this song really fits uh, today's show. It's called "In My World." Here's Ray White. Thanks again for calling Cause I know you didn't have to And I'm sorry if I've kept you on the line Yes, I know you said you'd only think about next Sunday You're just taking one day at a time But in What I heard is that I still might have a chance To have it all again And in my world What it means is there's a reason to try Hope is alive know you had your reasons And I can't say I blame you You had every right to leave But I'm making lots of meetings And I've made a lot of changes You say we'll just wait and see But in I heard is that I 
I still might have a chance to have it all again. And in my world, what it means is there's a reason to try. Hope is alive in my world. But in your world, it might not mean that much. But in my world, it's all I have to hold on to. In my world, what I heard is that I still might have a chance to have it all. This is the Monty Man along with Bruce and Eve and Harlan. And we're wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now, my friends. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs>